Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm Brushes and Monies, and today we're going to be doing a watercolor mixed media speed painting video. I just came back from my little trip in the Netherlands. I had a wonderful time. I basically did not do anything art related. I did, however, go to the art store in a small little cute old village in the Netherlands and I did buy Spectrum Noir markers. They were on sale. So I bought those and I'm going to be doing a product review. Uh, I also bought other stuff, mixed media stuff, which I did use for this speed painting as well. So for this video, the idea was to just talk about my mixed media process and the materials that I use to achieve a mixed media look. I do mixed media quite often. I really, really like it. Um, I did kind of deep dive into just marker work or just pencil crayon work uh, within the last few months because I've been trying to practice with those materials themselves only. However, I keep going back to my one true love, which is actually just working with watercolors and pencils and markers and other sorts of really cool mixed media um, sort of materials and just bringing it all together and making one final product. So this is something that I'm really passionate about and I'm going to be talking about my process in this video. The very first thing that is the most important is actually the paper that you're using. The reason why is that you want to have a nice quality paper that will work for all of the materials that you're using. The paper that I love and I use the most for mixed media stuff is actually by Fabriano. It's a watercolor paper. I do use the hot pressed paper from Fabriano. This basically means that the paper is extra smooth. It has no uh, typical watercolor kind of bumps, which you get from the cold pressed paper. The hot pressed has a smooth finish. It is very smooth in terms of when you're applying your pencils or your paint. And also, uh, I feel like the colors stand out much more. There's a lot more vibrancy with the actual watercolor colors that you're using. And I think this is something that's associated to hot press paper. I could be wrong, but I think that um, I read that somewhere that the hot press is much, much better um, in terms of making the color pop compared to the cold press paper. So this is very important for me, especially when I'm using different types of materials, especially with uh, pencil crayons. Uh, so I really want to make sure that it will apply smoothly on the paper. The next thing I do is I either sketch the actual drawing on the Fabriano paper or I will um, sketch it in my sketchbook and then I will trace it with a light pad uh, onto the actual watercolor paper. I'm going to be talking about this in a separate video, um, but that's basically what I've been doing. Once the sketch has been added to the paper, I start with the watercolor process. And for watercolors, I use sort assorted brushes. I will either use water brushes or I will use actual paint brushes and there are different sizes, different thicknesses. Uh, but basically, I will just apply a flat layer of watercolor in the on the subject. So whether this is the hair or the face, I will just apply a flat layer. And I'll, we'll do this all at once and basically just wait for it to dry. And in the drawing process, I may add additional layers of color, maybe a darker shade or a different color in the hair, for example. Especially around the face, I would add darker, sort of um, a brownish or a pinkish tone around the shadowy areas of the face, just to already establish the color. The next step is done especially for the subject's face, and this is to start working with the Faber-Castell polychromos. Now what I do with this is I basically start around the eyes and I start to shade in the areas of the face. And I use a variety of different pencils, um, or pencil co colors I should say. For the Faber-Castell polychromos, I like to use a lot of the kind of flesh tones. So it, there's like a light flesh color, there is a cinnamon color, I might use um, sort of a, I think it's called walnut or light walnut color, which is a brown. I will also play around with dark indigo and um, a variety of pinks. It depends on the, the flesh tone or the skin color you want to achieve. Of course, for darker skin colors, you want to use darker shades like a sepia or an ochre, um, and then of course the walnut or the dark in indigo. And there's all kinds of varieties, and I think I'm going to be actually doing a, um, a couple of videos talking about the, the colors that I select for light skin tone, darker skin tone, medium shade skin tone. I think this would be a cool tutorial to do. But I basically dabble with the Vapor Castell polychromos and I just start to sketch it in. I use a lot of the whites as well to um, kind of blend the colors together. And as of late, I actually started using uh, Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils, which are fantastic. They are so smooth, they are so smooth. So I use a combination of the Luminance pencils 
um, especially the white as well, and I basically just blend in the Faber-Castell and the luminance together for the skin. Something I also like to add to my drawings is actually marker. So marker I will use very seldomly. I will primarily use it for the eyes, so you can see in this drawing I did use it for um, the color in the eyes as well as the shading around the sort of white of the eyes. Uh, so for this I use Copic markers and for the actual face as well I would add maybe a few touches of color as well from um, you know using markers and this really depends I might use Copic I might use touch I might use my brush markers from Winsor & Newton it really depends on the color that I want However, you have to be very careful because if you're using something like watercolor paper, you want to be um, quite limited in the amount of marker that you use. So don't use so much because the paper is supposed to be absorbent because it is watercolor paper. Uh, so you want to um, just focus on specific areas, for example, like I do with the eyes because I really want them to stand out. So marker is perfect for that or shadowy areas around the face, sometimes even in the hair. Uh, so you want to be very careful with how much you actually use because it could end up depleting your marker much quicker than you expect. Any sort of additional materials that I might use would be like a white gel pen. This will be done in the eyes and the lips to give sort of a highlighted glow. I will also use the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen, which is a black fine liner, especially for the eyes and the, um, the eyelashes, sometimes for the eyebrows, and just for small details, um, in maybe in the lips or in the nose. I will also sometimes use colored fine liners, and um, this really depends again for the look that you're going. So instead of using a harsh black fine liner around the face, for example, you might want to use one that's actually skin tone color, and this might give a more softer, more feminine look as well. And basically, apart from the finer details, which will come later on, uh, it's basically just a layering game. So you layer, again, your watercolor with your marker or with your pencil crayon, and you just layer until you achieve the desired look that you want. And this is pretty much how you work with mixed media or how I work with mixed media. So the face will seem very, very full of material. It's very layer layered to achieve the look, whilst the hair, you can see it's pretty much only watercolor. Now for this drawing, I did use something very special. It is an additional product, which you guys can see me doing right now. I am currently stamping with a um, transparent ink pad and using an embossing powder. And I'm using a gold powder to basically just um, cover over the stamp area that I stamped on the paper. And after that, I take a heat gun and I bring the heat gun up to the actual powder and you will see it will basically transform into a metallic kind of texture on the paper. Now this looks so, so cool. When you use it right, um, I'm still learning how to do it because it's actually one of the first times that I actually use it, so I've been playing around with it. But you guys will probably see that I'll be using this embossing powder more so on my um, portraits, um, upcoming portraits, because I love what you can achieve with it. So this is another element that you can really add to your mixed media stuff, and you can definitely play around to make some really interesting looks. And that's basically how I do my mixed media stuff. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of fun because you can just basically just keep layering things on top of each other and work with different things. So I actually really, really like it apart from like instead of working with only one material like oil painting and or just marker work, I think it's a lot of fun to see what you can achieve and how you can put things together. Um, so guys, really give it a try. Um, you will have a lot of fun. It can be messy, but I think it's definitely worth it. And come on. If it's not messy, are you really having fun? So I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do give it a big thumbs up if you did and if you like the drawing that I made. Um, do follow me on social media. I have all of my sort of Instagram, Facebook stuff links down below in the video description. I also have all of the products that I used in this drawing listed down below. So if you guys are curious and you want to know more about the specific brands that I use, you guys can see this down in the video description. So I'd like to wish you guys a fantastic day, fantastic Tuesday. I'm probably going to be either painting today and or playing my new game called Fortnite, which is still early access, but it's a pretty fun game so far. So guys, check it out. Fortnite is pretty cool. Um, and apart from that, I will be seeing you guys very, very soon. Bye!